on the stairwell thing. And he goes back a little ways, like stumbles and loses his balance, like kind of sits down and rolls down the first thing of steps. I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement This is a uh, story here is about a guy I knew, I ain't gonna say his full name, his name was Jim. He looked like Kiwi Herman. But anyway, he was a skinny guy. Most people in, in at MSP had long hair, beards, or, or they were bald. He wasn't bald, he had his hair cut short, clean shaven, and he was a little bit off, you know. So people pretty much left him alone. He uh, had his antics, you know. He, uh, he would tell you stories, tell you things, you know, and people just laughed it off, you know. They just, they, oh, yeah, whatever, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know. That's the way he treated him. But one day, uh, I said something that he didn't like, and he we started arguing. The weird thing is, later on, I mean, he just walked away. You know, I, I wasn't going to uh, fight him or nothing, you know. He, he, he's off. But he just walked away, and a few hours later, he comes up to me and starts talking to me as if the argument we had never happened. You know, he's just, hey, man, uh, how you doing, man? And, and just... He's asking for a cigarette. I gave him a cigarette, but I was just looking at him like, anyway. <laughs> and he was like this with everybody, you know. If he got into it with somebody, it wouldn't be very long. He was laughing, cutting up with them, or trying to, you know. Some of them would just say, man, just stay away from me, you know. One day he gets into it with somebody on the top walk, and I don't know how he didn't get seriously hurt. And he just kept pushing up on the guy, and the guy kind of pushed him, and he was like, on the stairwell thing. And he goes back a little ways, like stumbles and loses his balance, like kind of sits down and rolls down the first thing of steps. He's bruised up, he's a little hurt, but I'm, I'm thinking, man, he, sh he could have been seriously hurt. Anyway, I get transferred to Farmington. And when I get transferred to Farmington, he was one of the ones they, they sent down there too. A bunch of us from Missouri State Penitentiary got sent there. But we get, all get sit down there, a bunch of us. None of us really, after we, at first we, we thought we was gonna like the, the place. And it got to where we didn't. Because on the other, it, it's actually two prisons in one. You had A side and B side, and B side was full of chumos. And there was even some on the other side, but they was waiting to go to the, you know, the other side. And a lot of times they get ran off the yard or something. It was just, you know, everybody's man, they got them run. I was the same way, man. They got them running around, you know. They got their own yard and, and gym and everything. But Jim was from Farmington. A little backstory: He uh, was wondering where his wife was at. She told him that she was uh, with her mother and that they was going to McDonald's. He thought she was cheating, so he goes to McDonald's, pulls in right beside him, deletes her, takes her out. And there was cops there. I said, man, you did this in broad daylight? He said, yeah, 30-30. That's what he had. That's what he used. I said, man, I can't believe you did that in, in broad daylight. And he goes, yeah. He, I said, later, do you, you still think she was cheating? Yeah, I, I think she was. I said, but she was with her mother. And yeah, they probably, that's just a cover. That's what he'd say. But anyway, he is from that town, uh, Farmington, where Farmington Correctional Center is at. And he got to where he would go out as close as he could to the fence and just sit there and stare outside the fence. Just sit there and stare. His mental thing just got worse and worse. If you went up and talked to him, sometimes he'd be rocking back and forth and he would not answer you. He'd say, hey Jim, you all right man? You doing all right? And he'd just sit there staring. And I don't know what ever happened to him, but he just got worse, you know. He wasn't in my house, and people were saying that when we'd have to go inside when the yard was closed or something, he was just really strange in, in the housing unit. And his celly did not like him, you know, and he couldn't keep a celly. People kept trying to make him move out, or they would move out, or whatever. One guy that I knew that was his celly said he would just sit there 
sometimes he'd have his TV on, but sometimes he wouldn't. He but he'd still stare at his TV, like this, back and forth. You know, a lot of people felt sorry for it in prison. When people have mental issues, they they're usually not picked on. I get asked a lot: Are people with mental issues picked on? Many times they're in a housing unit for them, but some of them aren't, and he was one of the ones that wasn't, and people just left him alone, especially the old heads, because they look at it this way. That could be any one of us. That could be anybody in prison that could lose it mentally, and that's true, and that's one of the things you got to think about. Prison is not just not about doing time. You're missing out on things with your family, holidays, and, and uh, all this and that, you know, birthdays, this and that. You have to deal with not, uh, not only the rest of the prison population, but the staff. It, a lot of this is stressful, you know, so um, some people can handle it and some can't. I'm going to do a video on how I survived 29 years in prison because I get asked about that a lot too, but I'm just lucky. And, but I also believe that anybody who's done any amount of time in prison, it affects them mentally. It's just that some come out better than others. Anyway, I thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.